You just know that our heir's father, Joseph Bastianich, is looking up at her from the depths of hell, shaking his head and calling her a harlot. So last time we talked, Gwyneth Westwood, the founder of my Not So Berry Challenge, celebrated Harvest Fest with her daughters, Rosalie Bastianich and Bella Westwood, girlfriend and alien baby mama Tanisha Stallings, and Rosalie's boyfriend Finley broke, opening presents in her home before attending dinner. While her daughter and our heir Rosalie went clubbing with Finley in early celebration of her birthday, she's leaving her teen years behind with a bang. Finale got back to Rosalie's place and immediately hit the bed, so drunk out of their minds that they pretty much slept the entire day. But that was perfect, because our founder, Gwyneth Westwood, had plans for this morning. Her girlfriend Tanisha was over bright and early yet again, arriving just after her daughter Bella Westwood headed for school. It was a chill morning. The two were sipping on mimosas and watching a comfy Winterfest movie with a lit fireplace beside them. Gwynny was feeling a bit down, even though she knew she shouldn't. It was just bittersweet that her daughter and our heir, Rosalie Bastianich, was aging up to a young adult today. She felt like she was just born yesterday, and now, she's a woman. She needed to get her mind off it, so. Her aunt Tanisha decided to go take a brisk walk through Crumbling Isle, and she also needed to get her mind off the fact that she hadn't smoked a cigarette in 24 hours. The withdrawal was kicking her ass. You got this girl, you're already doing better than your dead ex. For the first time in forever, Gwyneth felt truly at peace. When she would spend time with Tanisha, she didn't feel like she was walking on eggshells or forcing herself to love the sim she was with. It felt as easy as breathing. She genuinely loved spending time with her. Tanisha pretty much said yes to anything. It seemed she just wanted to spend as much time with Gwyneth as possible. Gwyneth thought a lot about how the two of them came to meet one another. It was definitely a story to tell. The both of them were simply doing their jobs. Gwyneth contacting aliens and Tanisha impregnating human sims against their will. Gwyneth knew that some sims would consider what Tanisha did to her as downright wrong. But Gwyneth understood the alien way of life, and she knew that Tanisha had no harmful intentions. After all, she's the one who became a scientist. She knew exactly what the risks of contacting aliens were, and she was happy with the outcome. Because now, she's just one level away from being at the top of her career. She has her beautiful daughter Bella, and she has a sweet, gentle, caring girlfriend, Tanisha Stallings. But the thing about Gwyneth is, She's getting up there. She only has one week until she ages up to an elder and unfortunately, due to Sims decades worth of bad decision making, she wasted her youth and majority of her adult years being with her ex, Joseph Bastianich. She knew it was soon and she knew this was sudden, but she wanted to stop wasting time and have Tanisha by her side for the rest of her life and she hoped she felt the same. and she did. Gwyneth and Tanisha are engaged. They're getting married. I am so happy for my Gwynny Boo Bear. She deserves this more than ever. It was fucking freezing outside. So Gwyneth and her now fiancé headed back indoors, talking about their future wedding until Tanisha fell asleep in her fiancé's arms. And that was right around the same time when Bella got back home from school. It unbeknownst to her that she'd soon have both of her mothers under the same roof. And Rosalie and Finley were certainly wide awake as well. If you all don't just do it already, well, they almost did. But they stopped themselves. Oh. Well, if you two wanna be inside each other so bad. Anyways, it was kinda awkward for a moment after they almost did that. So the birthday girl applied her eczema cream before doing some chores. Bella began her homework while Finley headed downstairs to get started on baking Rosalie a birthday cake. So this officially means that, like her mother, Rosalie is in her cougar era 
Rosalie, pick which broken parent you relate to more already. Unlike Gwynish's, Finley's age gap wasn't big at all. Finley would be aging up tomorrow during their Tartosa trip, right before they head out to the club. No more underage drinking for y'all. Oh my god. Who has been starving my poor baby speckles? If you're like this with your cat, I'll pray for your future child. Finley finished with the cake and set it down, while his girlfriend got the pizza she ordered from the deliverer. They weren't going out tonight. She wanted to save all of her energy for when they party in Tartosa, so they would just be having a simple movie night downstairs in the theater room. Rosalie kissed her childhood goodbye, her whole family gathering around to celebrate her. Upon aging up, Rosalie was given the snob trait, per the not so berry rules. And she graduated as valedictorian, literally how, I didn't even put much effort into her schooling. Joseph's genetics are really beginning to come through in Rosalie's young adult face, but Finley didn't care, he thought she was beautiful, spinning her in the air as he kissed her. John Hyde, you are such an ancient character that I forgot you existed completely, and how the fuck did you hear about the engagement when Gwyneth literally never talks to you? Why are all the dudes Gwyneth has dealt with so creepy? Since Rosalie and Finley were having a romantic night together, Gwyneth and Tanisha decided they should do the same, leaving the house to go out for drinks. Finley made some popcorn and slushies before the lovebirds began their movie as Rosalie munched on her pizza. She couldn't help but stare at Finley, admiring his handsome face and thinking about how much she loves him. It was such an incredible love, a feeling that consumed her, a feeling that she was sure she wouldn't feel with anyone else but him. Like Gwyneth, Rosalie felt nothing but peace when she was with him. She's loved him since she was a girl. She couldn't possibly imagine life without him. Maybe it was her young adult brain kicking in, but she didn't know why. She was scared of being alone with Finley during their upcoming trip. Being alone with him and only him was exactly what she needed. Nothing could be better than waking up and falling asleep to his precious face. Or playing house and cooking him breakfast. Or other things. Now that she thought of it, now would be a great opportunity to throw down. Her mom went out and her sister is probably asleep. They have the whole place to themselves. You are fiending hard for that simmeat. But just as they were really starting to inhale each other, Finley started to feel funny. Like. Not good. Like violently ill, to the point where he passed out from the pain. Rosalie was terrified. He was doing fine all day. Was it something that they ate? Once Finley regained consciousness, the two of them rushed him over to the hospital. And that's when they got the news. Ain't no way. Ain't no motherfucking way. Finley is dying from a fatal illness. Who are you? Jacob Volkov, my other favorite male sim of all time. Oh hell no, I am not letting Finley die. The two of them left for Finley to have emergency surgery. Rosalie crying oceans as the doctors worked their magic. And by the grace of the sim gods, Finley was cured from his fatal illness and would make a full recovery. Rosalie was devastated by what just happened. It felt like her heart was shattered and then glued back together. She almost lost the love of her life tonight, and she was just thinking to herself that she couldn't imagine life without him. Did she just jinx and almost kill her boyfriend. Finley gave his girlfriend lots of reassurance, holding and kissing her as he told her that he was going to be alright. She heard what the doctors said. It was scary, but now it was over. He wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. Rosalie really needed to hear that. 
Finley fell asleep quickly from all the drugs he was given at the hospital, but Rosalie was in no mood to sleep. What happened tonight was traumatic, and on her birthday, for goodness sake. But one good thing to come out from this was that it scared any doubts Rosalie had about her vacation with Finley right out of her. She was going to enjoy her time with Finley to the fullest. She was going to show him that she loved him, and she was going to tell him that too. She almost lost her chance.